Good morning, everyone. My name is Wei Qiao Zhang, or Zhang Wei Qiao, depends on if you call me in English or Chinese. Thank you for the organizer of this event. I can see that there are many, very, many, many challenges in coming together and sharing our thoughts and the arts for Canada 150. But you know that when you want to travel to a place that's very hard to get to, you gotta take a train, take a ferry, maybe take a long hike, but you will get to somewhere very beautiful, right? You will get to a place that you will always remember. So today, as we break so many barriers and challenge, overcome so many challenges to cross culture, to exchange our experiences and our thoughts, I think we will have a very rewarding uh, experience and get a lot out of this. So today I'd like to share with you uh, this poem that I'd like to talk a little bit about it because it's not very easy to understand. Um, so the context, this poem is written for an artwork. Uh, have we prepared the, the picture? So it's prepared for an artwork called The Southeast Wind. It's by a very influential Canadian indigenous artist named Robert Davidson. Uh, and uh, Robert Davidson, and he's from Haida Gwaii. Anyone know where Haida Gwaii is? Yeah? Okay. Haida Gwaii, for some of you that don't know, is off the coast of Prince Rupert in northern BC. Do you know how big Haida Gwaii is? What's the size of Haida Gwaii? It's everything in Canada is big, right? Haida Gwaii is the size of Jamaica and it's full of wilderness. So this artist has erected lots of totems on the island and left a lot of landmarks and also he has studied in Vancouver, the School of Arts. This poem is talking about the wind Think about it. It's about the when. How can you paint a picture of the when? How can you, you know, de depict the when in your drawings? So I want you to look at the drawing because the, the poet, poet, not only that he describes the drawing in the poem, but in the poem, but also describes the making of the of the painting. And poems, I think they are words, but they are more than words. They are a set of beliefs and values. And they are a way of life. They are a philosophy. You know, we pay respect to our indigenous people. And we here, we have a lot of Chinese immigrants here. So I like to see if we're all writing a book together in Canada, the indigenous people is the first page of the book, and we are so thus far the last page of the book. But we share a lot in common. Although we now, our culture is pro-development, but in the traditional Chinese culture, we, we didn't pro-development, we wasn't pro-development. We was very much like the Aboriginal people. So we have a lot to learn from each other. So today, I'd like you to think about the when, when I read you the poem and think about what it does, and think about we live in a world as one. We are all so closely interconnected. So I hope you enjoy. Resilience by David Haskins. How do you paint the southeast wind? that blows the pox into every eye, topples totem, lays waste burial grounds, crashes warriors in a foamy stew, carries off children to an alien language, turns the river stones of spawning salmon, cracks the canoe inside the fir tree. You pound the red ochre to powder. 
make salmon eggs with your spit. Take 30 seconds to do the design. Take one whole day to crystallize. Where negative is positive, is negative again. The need for yes or no forgotten on the wind that raises up the killer will, light as air. Wind moves the line. Line leads the eye. Eye guides the hand. Hand cuts the curve. Charcoal blackens thick skeletal bones around U-shaped fins, ovoid head, blowhole, tail. I already human. Form lines winnow. Dissipate energy away from a dematerialized, numinous beast. The storm drum rumbles on top of Toe Hill. The spirit creature breaches from a crack in the past. When the door between worlds was easily open, grab the wind by its kelp hair. Pull it into your canoe. <coughs> the wind become whale, become humans, tells you, look back where you came from, then break a new trail to paint your survival through sorrow and storm. All that remains are moss-covered thresholds. Grin indentations in the forest floor. A mortuary board, a potlatch pulling, ancestral stories 10,000 years old. I sit down, I sit with the watchman on the log in South Morrisby. He shares his breakfast with a deer at Arby's Lane and listens for the thrum of the south-east wind. <laughs>